questions for you, Lucy. What stands out to you as the overall, about the overall accomplishments of the OCV Working Group this past year? So uh, thank you for that question. And I am in a great position, having just joined as chair, that I get to present all the achievements from the previous <laughs> chair. <laughs> um, so thanks to Frank as well, I guess. But um, in general, um, in terms of like OCV achievements, I just wanted to start by saying we've had two preventative requests approved for Nigeria and Ethiopia. So thank you to both those countries for all their work. And they were about around 10 million doses each. And we've also had new countries engaged in introducing OCV, about three countries, I think, that are interested. So just to put a general update there, but in terms of the working group itself, um, we've had quite a few successes this year and mostly wanted to, due to the engagement and active participation of the working group members, so just wanted to give them a shout out and hopefully that will continue with me as chair next year. <laughs> Uh, the two, three things I wanted to highlight was um, uh, international training we did for OCV request and campaign quality implementation. We piloted this in Nigeria at the end of April. We had six Anglophone countries participate. Um, country engagement was high throughout the process and we've already seen an impact in the, um, well, anecdotal impact, I guess, in terms of the requests that are coming through from countries that have improved. And we're excited um, to implement the next one in DRC in October for Francophone countries. Um, we've also had interest um, from countries to do it at national level as well, rather than just the regional level. And so we're working with all the partners that were involved that Philip mentioned, um, CSP, Gavi, WHO, ourselves at CDC, um, to, and MMGH to revise that material to make it more focused to the country level. Um, and um, plan to pilot that in Ethiopia this year as well. Um, the second um, activity I wanted to highlight was the dashboard that has been developed in partnership with uh, Epicentre, um, which uh, demonstrates or documents the uh, use of OCV and how it's been deployed across the world in an interactive online dashboard. And then uh, finally, just to highlight that we've managed to produce several technical documents looking at um, revision of guidelines for how um, applications should be review reviewed and also for prioritizing um, hotspots for OCV use. Thanks. Okay, brilliant. Um, and so I guess, yeah, sort of a follow-on question. We, and we've heard a little bit about some of the challenges um, this morning. Um, and then um, I think Philippe raised some of them around supply um, for OCV. And so I'm curious to hear, um, can you just sort of outline what you see as some of the major challenges that the working group is going to be focusing on this year? Um, yeah, I mean, we did hear a lot of them this morning, but for us, I think um, for the working group, one of the concerns I guess we have is making sure OCV is positioned appropriately in the whole discussion on cholera. I know it's um, demanding a lot of time as part of the broader program and so um, making sure it's reframed back as a bridging activity that can provide opportunities to build on the WASH activities. Um, and with that, from the OCV perspective, better integration and stronger integration with the other working groups. We do have uh, members from WASH experts in our group as well, but I think we need to strengthen that moving forward and happy to speak with relevant chairs about how we can improve that. Um, obviously, the supply and stockpile limitation is has a big impact on anything we're trying to plan. Um, and so keeping on working with countries and rolling out this guideline for um, multi-year plan activities, I think is something we're pushing forward. And through that, trying to work out some of the delays in implementation that countries are seeing in terms of receipt. Um, on the ground, some of the challenges we're seeing are lack of engagement with EPI. Um, and so it's not the case in all countries, but just making sure that engagement is there because of their skills with implementing campaigns. And um, as part of this training, I was just telling you about improving quality so that we can boost the two-dose coverage as well, which we've seen drop off in the last year. Um, and then as got brought up this morning, this whole 
uh, prioritization of reactive versus preventative and how to make the best use of the doses that we have available. Over.